Locked off seconds. of Nile Sat 301. T-minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition and liftoff. Someone one d chamber cut phenomenal. Pitching down range. T-plus 40 seconds into the mission, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 right, at Cape Canaveral Canaveral. Space Force Station, carrying the NILESAT 301 satellite to a geosynchronous transfer orbit. Right now, we are throttling down the first stage engines in preparation for a period known as Max-Q. This is where we'll experience the vehicle highest amount tonic. of aerodynamic pressures on the vehicle. Max Q. Now that we've passed Max Q, we are now bringing those engines back up to full power. In about a minute, we have a couple of events happening in quick succession. Uh, first up will be main engine cutoff, also known as MECO, followed by stage separation, and then SES-1, also known as second engine start one. During uh, main engine cutoff, those nine engines will shut off. Uh, during stage separation, and the first two. and second stages will separate from one another. And then during SES-1 or second engine start one, we'll have that single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. It will ignite and continue to carry the NILESAT 301 satellite to its targeted drop-off orbit. Shortly after we see ignition of the second stage engine, we are expecting those fairing halves to deploy and exposing, uh, again, that uh, NILESAT 301 satellite to the vacuum of space. Some really cool ground shots of the Falcon 9 vehicle. Coming up on main engine cutoff in a few seconds here. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And impact ignition. So we got successful main engine cutoff, successful stage separation, and you can see on the right-hand side of the screen that Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage has indeed uh, reignited, or not reignited, had started up and is now propelling the second stage with our payload uh, to its drop-off orbit. So coming up, we'll have uh, fairing deploy in about uh, five or so seconds. Separation confirmed. And there you see it. The two fairing halves have separated and are falling away from the vehicle, now exposing the NILESAT-31 satellite. Uh, as a reminder, again, we are going to be attempting to recover those fairing halves with the help of our recovery vessel, Doug. For now, we are about, we're about four minutes into the mission. Uh, things are looking great. So you have a couple of views on screen. On the left-hand side is a view from the top of the first stage looking down. Uh, it is making its way back to Both our drone ship. Just read the instruction, which is part in Urbina. the Atlantic Ocean. And on the right-hand side, again, is the view of the Merlin vacuum engine. Uh, on the opposite side of that engine is um, the NILESAT-301 satellite. So we're currently in the first of two planned MVAC burns for the second stage. Uh, as for the first stage, at around the T plus six 
minute and 27 second mark, you should see uh, on screen the first stage's entry burn. It's, uh, it's one of two burns needed to land the first stage today. For the entry burn, we relight the center engine, engine number nine, and then partway through that, we'll relight engines number one and five, so that we'll have three total M1D engines helping to slow down the vehicle as it passes through the Earth's atmosphere. You'll see the exhaust start as a circular plume from the center engine, and then change shape to a longer, narrow plume when the two other engines reignite. Uh, reusability is key to lowering the cost of space flight, which enables more investments in critical scientific research. The Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission will, will be performing this entry burn for the seventh time, having previously supported two Starlink missions, the Axiom 1 mission, the Inspiration 4 mission, and the GPS 3-4 and 5 mission.